Commemorating World Environment Day on Now is brought to you by the Ministry of Planning and Development and the United Nations Development Program. All right, welcome back, everybody. We are smack dab in our number two here on the Now Morning Show, and we are commemorating World Environment Day, which is on June 5th. And with us all morning is the Ministry of Planning and Development. And uh, just in the background there, you were hearing some fantastic music by our fantastic DJ, Mr. Rokas himself. And that one was Brother Resistance, and it really takes me back. Um, and of course, the music is very appropriate. Uh, that one is Mother Earth, right, Rokas? Yes, sir. All right, all right. Now, the topic right now in this segment is biodiversity. And of course, we need to have a biodiversity specialist with us. And her name is Lena Dempervolf. And we are going to be chatting about just that. Good morning and welcome. Hey, good morning. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Thank you for being here with us. And uh, first questions first, uh, what is biodiversity? So biodiversity is basically the collection of all living things on Earth. So this includes all plants, animals, even microorganisms. And it, it doesn't just refer to biological diversity between species, but also biological diversity within species. So the genetic diversity that occurs in any one species. Uh, the idea is that you want things to be as diverse as possible to act as insurance against loss because everything has a function and a role. So if one species were to be lost, something else will hopefully be there to take up at least some of the slack of the um, now missing species. Right. And, uh, you know, as you, as you mentioned, everything being connected, you know, and, and in this ecosystem, you know, why is it of uh, not really local, but of international importance and, uh, on, and concern, really? So uh, biodiversity supports and, and creates these things called ecosystem services. Uh, ecosystem services are the benefits that humans derive from nature. And those are basically categorized into four broad groups. So you have provisioning services, which are things like food, water, fiber, tangible items that you get from nature. Mm -hmm. Uh, you have regulating services, those are things like um, carbon sequestration and so on that regulate cycles, water cycling and so on. You have supporting services that support other ecosystem services like pollination. Pollination will support food production. And then you even have cultural services. So cultural services are those that um, where you derive sort of spiritual values from nature, enjoyment, relaxation, and going to the beach, that sort of thing. And um, this is globally obviously very important because we can't survive without nature. So the diversity of nature is what gives us this diversity of products and services that we benefit from. And again, it's so important. And you know, um, I've heard in on different uh, documentaries and, and articles and whatnot that Trinidad is a uh, land, Trinidad and Tobago rather is a land that is extremely biodiverse when it comes to um, the species we find on land and species we find in the sea as well, and other waterways. Um, how can we do our part to, well, to, to promote, to manage, and to conserve biodiversity here in Trinidad and Tobago? So, um, yes, we are extremely biodiverse for our landmass. We are a very small island, and we have a lot of biodiversity. It's largely due to our proximity to the South American mainland. And as a consequence, we've retained a lot of that South American biodiversity and some of it has had a chance to evolve. So we have a number of unique species. And um, again, these are important to us for various reasons. Uh, there are a number of things that people can do to, to conserve biodiversity. I know that this is usually a, sort of a, a big topic um, like climate change and, and so on where people think that they can't really do anything personally, but there are things that you can do. Um, you can, in terms of pesticide use or heavy pesticide use, that's usually a bad thing. Um, even if you don't like the, you know, less charismatic organisms like the insects and so on, they have really important roles in pollination and in um, pest control and other aspects. And everything has its purpose. So overusing pesticides is a huge issue. So, so cutting back on that. And it's not, not just necessarily uh, farming alone. Um, a lot of people use pesticides in their back yards every day or in their households they spray the buff and they do whatever so right. those are things that you can that you can actually that you have pretty much a lot of control over um, that you can work with other things are just you know no clear cutting of land um maintaining sort of species that um in your yard and around the house that are local so you don't want to have um species that are foreign or invasive um, even things like reporting invasive species, for instance, so with the giant African snail, for example, right. or the lionfish, stuff like that, um, you can engage that way. Um, 
And it's really just to, to sort of lower your, your footprint on the environment. You don't want to throw your garbage in the end everywhere. Um, you don't want to wash the oil down the drain, um, that kind of thing, because all those things are, are things that ultimately harm biodiversity. Uh, so it's just a way of being more mindful of your, your daily activities, and, and that can go a long way. Uh, let's look at big picture now. What is being done on a governmental and on a national scale when it comes to biodiversity preservation and um, and, and things along those lines? Right, so we are signatory to the Convention on Biological Diversity, or CBD, and um, currently this is actually we're in negotiations internationally for the next set of targets for the post-2020 Global Biodiversity Framework for 2030. Um, for the previous set of targets, which are now wrapping up, um, we had established, or we are, we were supposed to, but every government has to establish a national biodiversity strategy and action plan. And um, we have associated a committee with that um, from various branches of government that are um, implementing um, the different activities to reach us to these targets. Um, now there are negotiations ongoing for the next set of targets that are, that are geared towards 2030 and ultimately 2050. Um, so that's what's happening internationally. So we are working towards that. Um, and in addition to that, as um, Julius had already mentioned earlier, there are a number of projects that are going on within um, our department, our ministry. So uh, BioReach is something that is coming up that is looking at um, agricultural connectivity and improving um, biodiversity in agricultural landscapes. Then we actually have our best net project starting this month, which is based on pollination and pollinator biodiversity conservation. So I'm actually very excited about that because pollination is sort of my pet project. Um, yeah. And um, we've had past past activities going on, like the If Palm CT project, where uh, it was looking at connectivity between protected areas and um, improving um, protected area management and so on. So, so there are quite a few different activities that were ongoing in the past and, and now as well. Now, you mentioned earlier uh, about invasive species and the way in which um, some of them, well, you didn't really mention the way in which they can be controlled. But what I know is that, um, for instance, there was this movement or this program to start culling the populations of certain things, such as the lionfish and such as the giant African snail. Um, when it comes to activities like that, how how does it how does it affect the overall ecosystem, and is it something that is beneficial, and are there any downsides to it? So removing the invasive species. Yes. Uh, okay, so basically, what happens is when you have an invasive species entering a new environment. Uh, the new environment already has an established network of organisms that um, live in harmony and sort of balance. So there's already food chains and food webs in existence, and um, that every anything that's new that enters that system causes disruptions. So, for instance, um, lionfish are um, known for their voracious appetites, and they eat any and everything. So when they enter a new ecosystem, they can cause the depletion of a lot of other species. And because this is a new predator to the environment, they have no defenses against this predator. Um, so it really does upset ecosystems in a big way and can cause um, even physical and structural changes in an ecosystem. So removing them is a good thing because it gives the native species that no, have no real protection against this new invader um, something to defend them. So uh, it gives them a chance to, to recuperate and to reestablish their old, um, their old network. So it is very important to remove those species as much as you can. Um, so is, is the goal to remove them completely or is it that you just want to control the population? No, well, I mean, ideally, any invasive species uh, you want to get rid of um, because they do have a very difficult, a very, very um, strenuous effect on the local ecosystem. So you want to get rid of them, yeah. Okay. All right. And when it comes to um, the to major players in the ecosystem, we actually spoke to a lecturer from UE recently, and uh, she was telling us about the importance of the guppy fish and mm -hmm. how it has been mm -hmm. used not only in Trinidad and Tobago, but it has actually been exported to other countries for use in certain communities and cultures when it comes to um, various uses, including uh, controlling pests such as mosquitoes. What can you tell us about uh, the guppy fish uh, projects like that and also uh, other species from Trinidad and Tobago that, that, you, that can be used for great benefit as well? Okay, so um, 
using species as a sort of a biological control mechanism as possible, but you ha it has to be managed properly. So uh, you want to make sure that it doesn't get out into the wild. So if you have it to control, for instance, mosquitoes or whatever it is, you want to maintain it in a particular um, well, in a particular environment, you don't want it to go out into the wild. Um, right. So, I mean, effectively, this is how the lionfish reach everywhere. It's from aquarium trade. Uh, so it's the same thing. You don't want, on other countries, I think they have issues with people releasing goldfish into waterways and they turn into really large fish that, that eat everything. Really? So what you want to make sure is that, yeah, that you have that, that the pet trade and the sort of the, the trade of, um, or the use of invasive species or that, that would be invasive species um, you want to make sure that they're controlled in a way that they don't get out into the environment so for example um, the honeybee that we have apis mellifera um, that we get honey from it's very very beneficial for us in terms of the food components um, and livelihoods and so on um, but it can potentially have a bit of a negative impact on local species because it can sort of bully the local bee species away from our local flowers and they're not quite right. as good as, as at pollinating our local plants because they haven't co-evolved with them. Um, so that's sort of a, a local example of when an invasive species comes here, but once it's managed properly, um, it can be very useful, but you just have to make sure that uh, you sort of minimize the impacts of that species on the environment. And um, aside from these things and invasive, spe invasive species and all that, how do we, you know, as individuals, support that biodiversity in the land, in the nation here, Trinidad and Tobago? How do we do our part to ensure that, you know, um, the environment within which the species are found are preserved? Um, so again, it, it comes down to sort of personal responsibility and trying to do your part. So you want to minimize the amount of um, pollution that enters the environment. You want to minimize the amount of pesticides that you use or you want to use biological control methods. Um, uh, you want to, for instance, like in terms of farming, you can intercrop with, um, with very fragrant herbs and so on that can reduce the attractiveness of your plants to, to these pests and so on. Um, you want to make sure that you, I mean, the basic things, you recycle, you, you limit your waste, you try to reuse and reduce before you throw anything away. Um, so those are all sort of individual responsibility things that people can do um, to sort of help. So I, I guess the idea is just so that when you, before you do something, you know, kind of think about what your impact would be and how you can possibly minimize that. I mean, I know it's not always possible, um, but, you know, it's just, it's a start. And if everybody does that, we'll go a long way. Let's speak now about uh, endangered species here in Trinidad and Tobago. Are there anything? Are there any species that are um, that are designated and categorized as endangered and things that we really should be paying attention to? So um, the IUCN has an official red list for internationally for endangered species, and it lists them by um, by status. So there's actually a whole lot of stuff on there. Um, that ranges from near threatened to critically endangered. Um, we have designated environmentally sensitive species. So the golden tree frog, for instance, is one, um, the ocelot is one, and so on. So these are these are species that are um, designated as environmentally sensitive and, and are reserved special protection um, in that regard. But they're not the only ones that are actually um that are actually endangered at this point there are others that um that exist uh, but the, the issue for us also is that we often just don't have enough data um because a lot of research is not done on a lot of these species for instance we may not even know um all of the insect species that we have in this country uh there's a good chance that a lot of them are endangered and we just haven't even met them yet um so that's also a big issue because people tend to uh, you know their habitats get destroyed um, and the species become extinct before they're even ever known, and, and that's a big problem. Yeah, and I, it's really sad to think about, you know, an entire species, species just disappearing off the face of the earth forever, and, you know, we do even really know, you know, what, they, what, what role they played in the environment and the ecosystem and these things as well. Uh, you know, so I guess we just all have to do better as, as human beings and, you know, really take into consideration our action when it comes to the environment and, and these things as well. Lena, I want to thank you so much for joining us this morning. I want to thank you for your time and for the information because I've definitely learned a lot and I'm sure the viewers have learned a lot as well. No problem. Thank you very much for having me. <laughs> All right. That's Lena Dempovo, who is a biodiversity specialist uh, with the Ministry of Planning and Development. And we have been speaking in commemoration of World Environment Day, which is coming up on June 5th. 
but uh, the Ministry of Finance Development will be with us all week. We're going to take a short break and we're going to come back with much more here on the Now Morning Show. Have a great morning, Lena. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. World Environment Day on Now is brought to you by the Ministry of Planning and Development and the United Nations Development Programme.